So Lincoln Riley and, well, yeah, after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And Lincoln Riley making waves, pushing back against the idea of bringing kids onto campus starting June 1st by saying it's ridiculous and one of the most ridiculous things he's ever heard. His reasoning being, why do you want to try to bring the kids back on campus when we're learning more about how to attack this pandemic from a sports standpoint every day and every single day we get closer to a vaccine? Why are we going to blow our one opportunity at having this go well by risking it all in June when it really doesn't matter. Riley saying, hey, look, don't bring these kids back before we absolutely positively have to. And we've been hearing this number of six weeks thrown out over and over and over again as to what college football coaches think it's going to take for their players to get into shape to play a college football season beginning in September with the college football season still scheduled to kick off August 29th with a game between Notre Dame and Navy. That game right now is still scheduled to go on in Dublin, Ireland. I got a hard time thinking that that's going to happen, but I would not be shocked to find out that game happens some, somewhere, somehow. But Riley also is the highest paid state employee in the state of Oklahoma, which is pro-business and very much looking at playing sports. As a matter of fact, today, Friday, May 15th, we're going to have little leagues that play under physical distancing guidelines. We're asking parents to stay in their vehicles and sit around the diamond. We're asking the kids to spread out, not just in the dugout, but in the stands. And they're going to play some ball, right? That's what's going to happen in Oklahoma. So for Riley to have this stance, particularly in the state where they're already reopening gyms, right? We've reopened most gyms. And in a state where we basically decided, hey, the virus hasn't hit us like it's hit everybody else, so we're going to go forward. My own opinions about this don't seem to matter as much anymore on this front because... <laughs> Well, it's going on, whether or not I agree with it or not. But having Lincoln Riley have this particular stance also informs what you see might happen with Oklahoma and its football program as Texas staff is going to get back into the building and start trying to build toward their season early June, and they're going to open up their facilities to 25% capacity on June 1st. In Florida, we're seeing much the same thing. We're seeing that those folks are deciding, hey, when we get to open gyms here on May 18th, we're going to open the gym at the University of Florida, Florida State, Miami, and the like so that our kids have a place to work out and we can kind of sort of monitor them and we can also limit the number of kids that we have come through at a time and clean the equipment and move, which is not so different from what goes on anyway on strength and conditioning or at strength and conditioning centers across the country. You don't have everybody coming in at the same time. For the most part, you have them coming in in waves, right? You have this time for which you will lift. And then you stagger those throughout the day across all of your sports. Not, I don't think that the strength coaches in particular see this as an impediment. It's probably something like getting back to normal for them. But for Riley to have this position also shows you what he's willing to risk in 2020 for Oklahoma in a season where they're a top 10 team. I'm not sure it's a top 5 team, but it's a top 10 team, and it's a threat to get a sixth consecutive Big 12 championship and make a fourth straight appearance in the college football playoff. And if anybody would be lobbying for perhaps needing some time to work with his new and star players, it'd be one Lincoln Riley who has to figure out Tanner Mordecai or Spencer Rattler, though he said he's comfortable with both. He also needs to figure out who's replacing Jaden Hazelwood, though I think many of us believe that'd be Theo Weiss or Obi Obialo, or even Marvin Mims, you want this time. Everybody wants this time. But in this age where we're not totally sure what's going to happen, and caution has been the mood, watching people just kind of reopen is also made us a kind of little bit squirrely, right? I think that watching this go by government, state government in particular, is going to tell us a lot, right? Because most of the southeastern states have already either reopened or planning to reopen very soon. Meanwhile, states like California are imposing three-month-long stay-at-home orders that are going to go through the month of July and maybe even into August, depending on how this thing goes. And we have two schools of thought, the folks that are going, hey, we need to get out there anyway, and we can't let this derail us from what is a tremendously horrible time for the economy and on par with the worst time of all time 
in the United States. We also have folks that are going save life, right? If we know that staying at home saves more lives, we should do that. So the risk and the reward there also are grim, right? And if they're going to be grim, you're asking people to do something that helps us feel good or entertain us. But is it somebody else's responsibility to entertain us individuals, right? Should they have to risk putting themselves in harm's way? This is a conversation that's going on with Major League Baseball right now where you have many players going, it's not worth it for me to go out there even for, you know, a full salary, let alone for less than what I would get paid in a normal year under really abnormal circumstances. And then this idea of the spring football season seems to be the the escape button on the keyboard, right? And it feels like we just keep hitting return over and over again, expecting good things to happen, or we're hard shutting down the computer itself, then rebooting it, expecting everything to be okay. Many of you that work with desktops and laptops probably know that ain't the best course of action. And if you can avoid it, avoid it. But that also would imply that you're going through good maintenance practices and you're not downloading malware and you're not putting yourself in harm's way. And we kind of are doing just that. Downloading the malware is being in groups, right? You don't know that it's got you until it's got you. And if it's got you, my goodness, uh, may it may, may everything be with you because I just don't feel good about it. And yet, as I said, it doesn't matter if I feel good about it right now. What matters is how safe can you keep the kids? How do you convince the parents that they're going to be safe? And how do you continue to do this for at least the next six months? Right? Cause that's really what we're talking about. Most people believe that we'd have something like a vaccine around January 1st. I understand that every day that we can't do something normally is one tremendously mentally debilitating, but debilitating, but also debilitating for us as an economy and as a country. But with the Bundesliga starting up tomorrow and us getting NASCAR at Darlington on Sunday and the NBA trying to come up with something of a plan to either finish the regular season or play the playoffs and find ways to pay everybody and get money coming through the door. I expect something is going to happen this summer. I just don't know what or how or when. But I find it fascinating that Lincoln Riley has already thrown down this gauntlet, if you will, of saying no, which is in stark contrast, I might add, to Mike Gundy and what he said just last month during the stay at home about we need to get kids back on campus in May and we need to get this thing going so we get money flowing through the state, which I lampoon because one, we're still in April and the stay at home order was still in effect. So don't call for what can't happen. And two, I want the kids to be safe. I want you to be safe. And even if that means 25% capacity at Memorial Stadium, I'm okay with that right? Because I want everybody to be safe. And I understand that many people have many different statistics they could point to to make their arguments on this thing. But I would be on the side of caution because I love you (laughs) and I want you to be around. And uh, there's so many bad arguments out there. There's so many bad opinions out there. Please think about this in some detail. Come up with your own answer and allow yourself to be moved by the facts, by allow yourself to be moved from one opinion to another opinion based on what you learn because this thing is ever evolving and ever changing. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.